Welcome to Momentum Magnet, a podcast to inspire your growth. I'm Karen Morales, and your host in helping you find ways to make positive changes for your business, health, relationships, and life. We always have a path to a happier ending, so let's get started today. To start our theme of the podcast for the summer. And after a really interesting week um, where I was able to experience about 200,000 people working with Tony Robbins online in a free training around the comeback, and it got me thinking, after the spring that we've all had, we've spent a lot of time talking about some really hard and dark subjects. And I think now, as we get into the summer season, it would be a really great time for us to take a pause and start to hear some stories of inspiration. So over the course of the next eight to 10 weeks, I'm inviting guests onto the show that have done something remarkable, that have transformed their lives and their businesses and their families in really interesting ways. And our first guest for the comeback story is a friend and one of Boston's hottest personal trainers, Uh, Ramon Garcia. And without further ado, I'm going to give a little backstory on Ramon. Ramon has been a professional athlete. He's played in Europe. He was a college basketball player. He is the owner with his wife of the American Academy of Personal Training. He is a fitness god to to the stars and to the fit of Boston. And he's here today to really talk about his journey of becoming an entrepreneur and how he was able to use fitness, which really helped him through his life and childhood, become his career. Ramon, welcome. Welcome, oh man. Thank, thank you. That that intro was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all true. I mean, you are known as the body whisperer in, <laughs> here in the fitness circles of Boston. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Good. Ramon is excited, and if. Ramon is excited. We should all be excited. Yeah. Ramon, um, the last couple of months has, has been a little bit challenging. I mean, you own a high-end personal training studio. You also own a school that does hands-on training for personal trainers. Before we get into your backstory, do you want to talk a little bit about how COVID has sort of impacted your businesses and some of the ways in which you've coped with those changes? Um, well, it, 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 it definitely hurt it in a sense of, uh, the face to face. I mean, everybody has, um, experienced it. Everybody has to, uh, you know, do a lot of work from home. Um, so as everybody probably knows, everything moved online in the sense of group classes, one-on-one training. I mean, zoom, the zoom stock went up <laughs> and, uh, cause everything's just done inside. So, um, it, it definitely hurt everybody's training business. Um, ours, it kind of all went in the standstill. A lot, a lot of my clients, um, I, I, I'm not putting any, uh, kind of background on anybody, but the type of people I deal with are more, uh, they run companies. So, so they all kind of, you know, they all hibernated, they all like the face to face. So, you know, they kind of took a little sabbatical, um, on that front, but, you know, I, I did my best to keep them, you know, just updated on things to do on their own. And, you know, I, the, my clientele, I kind of, I've been working with them for, for years. It's not like a four months, I'm out of here. So they really understand the things I teach them. So, um, and it's for times like this, you know, they, they know enough to do enough. And, and that's what the most important thing is to, to keep moving in our world. Yeah. And that's important. I mean, I think for a lot of us, the at home workout routines was one thing that made us stay sane. Mm -hmm. I know following your Instagram feed, you definitely uh, did your share of home workouts with your kids and with any bit of equipment you had in your home, which I think helps, right? It helped everybody. Well, it it definitely, it it adjusted um, a way of thinking of even creating something for yourself. because m- most of most of everybody in the private fitness world, they rely on their clients coming to them or 
or us going to their offices. And so being able to virtually create something to even generate any type of um, business was, was a blessing. But, you know, again, you have to like kind of dig into that brain and see what you can create. And not only that's going to help you, but also what's more important is to help others, especially during this time, getting through these, these tough times where, you know, all the, all you look out the window and all, all you're seeing is fear. So uh, how do you cope with that when that's our world? I mean, we're, we're constantly breaking barriers and that word fear just keeps hovering and, you know, you got to break, break that, break that, break those levers down and try to help people get through them. So it was, really, it was very, it was very great. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's a beautiful sentiment because I think what you're, what you're saying about fear is something that has been, you know, at the forefront of people's minds in the last three months. And when we're talking about the comeback story, right, which is the focus of today's episode, and I know your personal story, you definitely have one. How can you talk a little bit about how you grew up and how you were able to overcome some fear in your life as a child to get yourself on this path to use fitness as your way of connecting and helping other people transform? Um, well, as, as a kid, uh, as a kid, I grew up, I grew up in Haverhill. Uh, I don't know if whoever doesn't know where that is, that's north of Boston, um, around like Andover, Lowell area. Uh, but I grew up there and, uh, my, my background, like my mom was, you know, I grew up with a wealth, welfare background where we didn't have much, you know, we kind of grew up using the government to, to be able to sustain our lives. Um, but, you know, me, I don't know what it was. I just had this voice in my head growing up saying there has to be more than this. Like, and, you know, I look at all the celebrities and, you know, one celebrity I always follow is Michael Jordan because I was a basketball player. Um, and just seeing his trials and tribulations, I'm like, man, like, there just has to be more. And, and this, that one little voice always trickled every decade in my head, <laughs> whether it, it just always popped up and it always gave me the fuel to just look for more. And, and, you know, that comeback is like, you know, that comeback, you can just add so many things to it, but it's like the little comebacks, the little goals, how, how, however you want to place it. But like, it's, it's almost like just keeping that hunger alive to, just striving to be better is basically, you know, what people miss and lose. And it's how they can keep that fuel fired to keep them going to where they want to go and end up. Um, I love that. That's such a simple sentiment, but it's so hard to do. So many people, and I think we saw this a lot in the last few months, were thinking more about the challenges of the situation they were in rather than always looking forward to what could I do to make this situation better? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I, I, and to tell me like this, 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 there's a crazy thing what's happening now with, you know, all the deaths and, you know, who knows what story one person comes with one, one person comes with the other. But at the end of the day, I mean, for me, what's getting me through this in the sense of like, it doesn't matter where I pop my head up, at the end of this, I have to keep going. And, and if you don't do anything now, especially for if this hits again, because all you hear is this is going to happen again, and who knows what the government's going to do, but you have to be prepared for it. And regardless, this, uh, this virus that's going around, I, I don't even like to say the name. I don't like to indulge in that energy. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The virus that will not be named. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it, it's 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 a virus, just like any virus. If you don't have the system to fight it, and you know your your story's inspirational as well, and you you already know you're going, um, you're you're fighting the fight day in and day out, and and this is just another thing to be thrown on top of it. Is like you have to be on top of your game. Is that correct? Correct. And, we and, have to be. And and if we let this take us down even when we pop up at the end of the day, our bodies are created to fight something like this. 
And, and if people don't believe that, the mind's going to give you what you believe. So if you believe in fear, your body has, it's like your mind is creating these blueprints for you to see fear constantly and be aware of it. But a lot of people just can't handle fear. It's like if I throw you in the middle of the highway, you're going to be very fearful. But if I put you on a sidewalk, you, you will be very calm. But what if this world, this world's like a big highway and is like, okay, let me find the sidewalk, let me get there and let me get to my destination. That's beautiful. And you've always seemed to have found an ability to cope with fear by really getting into your body and moving it. So as a child, you found basketball as your escape. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how basketball played that role in your life? and helped you kind of move the fear through your own body and get to bigger and better places? Yeah. Well, um, uh, growing up, I, uh, you know, you come across a lot of different, different folks and you get to see like different abilities. Um, and me, I'm a kind of person that kind of did everything. You know, if, if you ever spoke to a coach, about me, he's gonna say, "Oh, he's either in the gym, he's running, he's biking, he's 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 always doing something," and so so my my childhood was just revolved around activity. But when I found how I can connect with people, and it was when I it was I I will never forget it. it was like my seventh grade summer. I went to this basketball camp that just like I met so many different um, basketball players and coaches and motivational speakers, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is great." And I was just being uplifted by everybody. And then when I came home, for some reason, I just became better than most people. I was like, oh, my God, I'm like, I'm, I'm actually pretty good. So then, so then I played my eighth grade year, and I was part of one of the best middle school teams in, in, uh, in the city, city of Haverhill. But then it trickled on to like just getting seen by being being able to like get recognized by the high school players. Hey, Ramon, come play. You know, it just I was just getting I was playing with the older folks. Basketball just always was a place where I can go and feel like I can excel at a fast rate. I can grow at a fast rate. I can learn at a fast rate. And basketball is just a dynamic. It's a it's a sport like any other sport, but um, being able to dive in a sport and understand it in a way of just living, you know, being able to um, drive a car, you know, and not every kid can do it. You know, there's kids dying today, uh, walking to the store, uh, normal life. It, it's, it's very simple, but it's, it's also can be difficult to people with difficulties like what we're doing today with people who can't breathe as well or whatnot or suffering um, it, it's just, it, there's a lot, there's a lot that basketball has done for my life and just the activity part, I was able to harness that. And that's what brought me into today where I'm like, okay, if I can be active, like I was in basketball, then I feel like I can excel like I did in basketball. And, and, and it goes to show the more I learn in fitness, the more I can teach people how to incorporate that in their lives and strive to be the best that they can be. And then that's, that's all we live for at the end of the day. That's beautiful. And you did go and play in Maine um, in college. And then yeah. after college, you actually played pro in, in Europe. Can you talk a little bit about, I don't know, moving from the cities of Ooh. Boston, you like as a black man to Maine and then going and playing overseas in Europe. Well, it's more, it's more like a Latin kid who had rice and beans every day. Latin kid. Okay. That's even better. Uh, a Dominican Latin kid who was Latin. used to having rice and beans. Yeah. Moving up to Maine and eating lobster. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I didn't get to the lobster until I met my wife, <laughs> but, but, uh, I, um, I went to Maine where it's a totally different dynamic. I mean, I, I'm, I'm of dark skin and there's not much up there. I mean, my roommate, when he first met me, he, he just looked at me weird and was like, hmm, I've never seen a, a colored person before. And oh, oh, and he, he literally used the word colored. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, he, he, used okay. the B word. he used the B word. I just said Oh, that. okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, but, but that was new to me. I like, I'd never experienced that. And, and that was like my, that was literally my first encounter with a college student in Maine. It was that I was like, that's, okay. that's heavy. Oh uh, yeah. I'm like, wow. Okay. This is going to be, uh, it, it, it didn't really upset me. I, I kind of, you know, I live life to, to, to an experience so mm-hmm. it takes a lot to really get me upset. The only thing that really would get me upset if someone really like just put somebody down. It's it just it touches another part of my heart that it like gets me going. But other than that, I always take situations like experiences. So going going to Maine, experiencing the whole college thing and then going to Europe Europe was so different because you know the, first of all the food was different and you know people in fitness are all big on eating you know yes. you, got, you got your cheat meals I like to call them treat meals um you got your you got you got to eat clean all the time clean meaning like non-processed um but uh but going going to Europe you had you have a totally different language I mean every sign was in Dutch when I, I started out in Holland and Amsterdam. So you see every sign in Dutch. And then you have like these eight foot girls coming out of like these little fiats. I'm like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. And it, it's, it's like, it's cleaner. It's so clean. It's, it's crazy. There's like not like not one speck of dust in the ground. I did appreciate that. That was very nice. Um, what was an easier transformation or easier place to fit in was it did you feel like it was easier to slip into rural Maine or become entrenched in Holland I would say Maine Maine really that's interesting why uh just because it's where my college was it wasn't in the smack middle of a city like Boston it was more secluded so so pretty much I had a little world within the world you know Right. Yeah, I had a little community where, you know, everybody knew each other and and you can create your own, I'm not saying necessarily cliques, but you can literally mm-hmm. create families within mm-hmm. all different aspects, whether it's a sports family, whether it's your um, family in the lunchroom, whether it's your class <laughs> class family, you know, you have so many yeah. different, different uh, avenues to go to when it comes to meeting people that it was it, it was just great to experience so many different cultures too at the same time. And, uh, and 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 basketball. So you played pro in two countries, right? You played pro in which two countries? In so in I I, pl- I played um, in uh, France, Germany. Oh, three. Uh, yeah, France, Germany, Holland, and then uh, Mexico, and um, and Dominican Republic. Okay, five. So I added up even even more countries. So that's interesting. Yeah. So you left you left and you played overseas. Mm-hmm. And talk a little bit about kind of that trajectory. Where was your mind? Were you trying to move to a certain team within the European um, Basketball Association, or were you just trying to see where it would take you? Well, it's, so me growing up, I had I had the we used to call back in the day hoop dreams. I don't know if they call it like that <laughs> these days, um, but yeah, I had like I said, I my idol was Michael Jordan. So like I try to emulate everything he did. And obviously he made it to the NBA without going overseas. Um, but I had a harder, more harder road than he did. And um, I was trying to, I was basically trying to go to the NBA, but try to use the international markets to get there. But after being there, after being there and seeing how people were treated, it just wasn't, it, it it wasn't um, attractive to me. It, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to people. It, the the way they the way they treated the athletes just wasn't my type of uh, atmosphere. Like you can get hurt today, and they have a ticket for you tomorrow, and they send you right home. That 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 wasn't my type of atmosphere or or type of basketball that I grew up playing. The way I the way I saw it was team and. You know, if you're part of an organization, you're part of an organization. It's like they're going to work their best to get you back to normal. They're going to give you a contract. So, like, I had all this going in. And then seeing how they treated these players, I was like, ugh, 
uh, not for me. So I was like, I got to use my degree and come back. <laughs> so that was one of the, you know, one of the first pivotal times you really had to decide to walk away from a dream and change it to something different. How did you get the courage to kind of make the decision to say, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the shelf and I'm going to go home and get a more traditional job? Oh, that was that was very hard, very hard. And it, and it happened several times in my life um, with this. Um, even going overseas was a decision. Um, but uh, but going coming back to work. Ooh, man, I, I, I sat down because, I mean, being a basketball player, you're like, you, you go in as an individual. Like, I was a two guard, so, like, I always went to teams as, like, okay, this is my goal. This is my role. I'm going to play my role. I'm going to do my part, and I'm going to try to be a big part of this organization. Is like, how can I do this in a world that I know nothing about, you know? And, and me, I, I went to school. I learned a lot, and I, I got a degree in, in Spanish literature, so I'm supposed to be a history teacher. So when I came back, I, I um, was teaching Spanish in, um, in in high school, Georgetown High School. So so that so so I broke through. I, I used my degree, um, and I went to and taught middle school and high school students for a year because I got a, I got an opportunity as a substitute to kind of kind of take me through to, to see what I wanted to do. And within that time, the, sub, the teacher I was substituting for was, was from Spain, and she just randomly quit. It was the weirdest thing ever. She just randomly quit and then said, Ramon, do you want this contract? I was like, uh, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you I'm, got back from playing basketball, and you mm -hmm. went to become a teacher. And after a year, I think, from your story, you decided, wait a minute, maybe this isn't for me. Yes. So, well, it was, it was very easy to see that because at the end of the year, they wanted to bring me back, but they wanted me to speak French. And all I know is we, oui, mon chéri, mademoiselle. <laughs> That's it. So yeah. I was like, not going to work. So then that career got, it was done right away. I mean, I, I, and at that time I was living with a roommate and I could barely pay any rent with that. So then I literally started doing like five different jobs and I was like, this is not normal. Like, and, and, and I'm seeing every successful person is like, you know, you see the Mark Zuckerbergs and the, the Bill Gates and all these big, these big names. And you just read their story and like Ford, like was working in his garage until someone said yes. You know? So I'm, I'm hearing all these stories. I'm like, Oh my God, like, none of them have 10 jobs like me. I mean, I, I was delivering papers. I, I drove trucks. I did insurance. I did real estate. You name it. I literally dabbled into every industry trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do. And, and this is what brought me back to fitness. It was like, Oh my God, like all my life I was successful being active. Why don't I do something active? So then I just went to what I knew best was basketball. And then I started training, doing basketball training. Um, with a company called uh, Visionary Basketball Group. And I did that for until like 2010 um, when uh, my wife was like, Ramon, I would love to move in the city. So then again, there was another pivotal <laughs> breakthrough. I had to let that go because it was either stay at home where I grew up or make this change into a city where I never lived or knew anything, knew much about besides sports. Um, so I jumped here and started recruiting. That's when my recruiting career started. And yet that was still just a stepping stone, a stepping stone. <laughs> getting back to fitness. Yes. So once again, after you left your dreams of going to the NBA mm -hmm. and you decided that teaching maybe wasn't going to be able to provide the consistency or the income you wanted, you yep. ended up back in the city working in recruiting and pretty soon realized that a sedentary desk job Oof. was just not for you. Yeah. But that, that was after I gained like 90 pounds on the desk. This is one of the best part of the stories, right? <laughs> so we have Ramon, who um, I know that we're talking with voices, but if you could see him, he's literally an Adonis. I mean, I don't think this man has any fat on his body. He is solid muscle 
and picturing you with 90 pounds, I've actually seen a photo. So I believe you that it is true. Talk, talk to us about how Mr. Fitness loses her way because it loses his way. I think it's important for everyone to know that even the fittest out there can get overwhelmed by a job or a lifestyle that isn't supporting their soul. Tell us a little bit about what happened to you in those yeah. years. And, and, I, and, I, and I think, and I think is that the, the, what you just said there at the end, the soul. Yeah. Um, if, if you're not nourishing your soul with things you love to do and that that's just what kind of takes you down, people lose motivation and, and you just can't really think the way you used to when things were just on point. And, and when I was doing this judge job, I think what kept me there is just the fact that I was helping people. I mean, at the end of the day, success comes from how many people are better off because you lived. Mm -hmm. And I mean, knowing that I'm like, okay, this is a recruiting job. I'm helping people get jobs that, you know, they're struggling to get. And, and all I'm doing is just saying several words and I have them ready to go work and do things that they want to do. But on that end, it wasn't guaranteed. So I'm here helping these people get these jobs. And then these jobs are cutting them off. Like they're like not worth anything. I mean, these people are going in there like so motivated to help these companies and these companies are just like cutting them off easy. And I'm like, I can't do that. I feel so bad. And then I'm the, I'm the guy who has to call them back and say, Hey man, I, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out. And they're like, people are literally crying on the phone. Like I, I just couldn't, it's too heartbreaking. And, and I'm, and again, I'm back to that point of there has to be something better than this. There, there, there just has to be. <laughs> and, and, uh, at this point things were happening in the company, you know, the, the market was changing and then you start the layoffs, the whole economic thing. And, and my bosses at the time, um, were let go. And they're all, and you know, these, bo the, they're one of the reasons why I stayed because they were so awesome. You know, again, again, team is so key. They said, Ramon, you know what, like pursue your dream. And, you know, at that time, that's when I, I got introduced to the American Academy of Personal Training. My buddy was actually a trainer at the time. And um, he still is. But at that time when he was, he was a trainer, he took me out two times in one week. And, you know, he spent some good money. And I'm like, uh, how do you do this? And what do I need to do? <laughs> Cause I was, that was too, the, the way it just happened, it, it just, it, it kind of like lit up something in my brain and I'm like, okay, he's not stressing. He's actually able to be active and he's able to live a lifestyle being active. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is my childhood. I would love to do that. If I can wake up, be active, help people be active and be able to live a sustainable lifestyle. No brainer. So You're I in. got, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. And so I went from being sedentary from 6 a.m. to 8 at night to being active all day long and and not being 300 pounds. <laughs> so God. in the purpose or in the process of finding your career, you also naturally lost all the weight. So as you were going through the American Academy for Personal Training, Tell mm -hmm. us about your body transformation and then how that even ended up become, you became the owner of the training school you attended. Yeah. So, so, um, I got into class and I'm like, okay, now that I'm in this world, I got to make sure I know what I'm teaching. So who's the better student than yourself? So I, I said, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take everything I learned and I'm going to apply it to myself and if you, if you talk to the teacher today, he'll tell you, man, Ramon just wouldn't stop. So like I'd ask a thousand questions, want to make sure I, I got this right. And then I'd go home and do it to myself. And literally uh, the program is either three to six months. I took the six month course because it was part time. So I was able to go to work from, from eight o'clock at night. I mean, from six o'clock in the morning to five, uh, six o'clock at night, I get out and I go right to class. I got out like at five thirty, snuck out and then go right, uh, right to school from six to 10. So I did that for six months. So I was able to have plenty of time to really implement it during a day at work. You know, I ate my meals, 
I did my calculations that I learned in class. And all of a sudden, like everybody at work was, blah, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? You look skinnier. Your clothes are getting baggy. I'm like, this is great. It's working. It's working. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I, I go in 277 and, and I come out like five months later, I'm 230. I'm like, oh my God, like I just lost 40 pounds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then by, by the time I got out of class, I entered a fitness competition. I'm like, I, I had to do something to keep me in this road. Cause I didn't have any clients at this time. So I finish, finish class. I get into a fitness competition and then I pick up literally three clients as soon as I graduate. And I'm like, and then and I get laid off. I don't know how it, it, it all, it all like, it's like the stars aligned itself. They laid me off. I got three clients and then I never looked back from there. And here we go. 2017, the, the previous owner says I'm ready to retire. And me and my wife, my wife was running the school at the time. She said, you know, I don't want to let go of the school. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. And I said, hey, I support you. And this is where we make our money as well. So, like, I'm like, let's let's buy it. <laughs> so that's, that's perfect. So right now you are one of the only hands-on personal training schools in the whole country. And the beautiful thing that we hear about your graduates is they all get placed in high-end gyms upon graduation. Because, I mean, I think that it's pretty intuitive to understand that it would be hard to become an exceptional personal trainer from just online videos. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's the hands-on piece that helps anybody. No, you, you, you don't, you don't become a doctor by doing online classes. You, no. you need to dissect even insects. You need, they, they make you dissect everything. They make you go in labs. They make you do residencies. Like there, there's years upon years of training before they even remotely let you take on a life. So you're not dissecting bodies like you do in, in surgeries and whatnot as a doctor, but you are dealing with life. And, and when you're dealing with life, you have to really understand what you're putting people through. Um, I mean, especially like when I met you, it was like one of the best, one of the best experiences of my life. Cause it's like, it was something new that I've never even heard of. And it was like, Oh my God, I get to dive in a whole new world and everything I knew kind of got challenged and and to put someone who just got an online cert and and you come up to them and say hey can you train me they're there it's that fear they're gonna have that fear where i was like oh my god i've been through everything and this is just something i need i i want to experience like your world and to see how I can be great in your world. It was like one of the best experiences ever, which one I thank you for. Oh, of course. And and that is that. So the true, the backstory there is I was introduced to Ramon through business contacts in Boston. I have a rare form of muscular dystrophy and I have met very few trainers or physical therapists who have any idea what to do with an extremely rare neurological condition. But from the second I met Ramon, which was really a, a networking meeting about marketing, he was able to sum up my body and challenge me to do more than anyone really ever had. So I think that it's a really, it's a beautiful skill that you have in your ability to not only connect with clients, but to understand what motivates them and to make sure that you really see the best version of them, even if they're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Which like is shallow, a skill. It's like Shallow How. The movie Shallow How got me to, to be able to see that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's, uh, and, and, and again, it's, it's, it's like that, the, the vision to be able to see the end result is because I, I feel everybody has the ability to be great. And, you know, anybody who puts themselves down, it's more like, okay, you're putting yourself down for a reason. It's either you don't want to deal with it mm. or you're actually scared of it. So if, 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 it's, if it's one of those, those two can be conquered. You just, you, we, we just got to make you see that you can do it. That, that's, 
that's how I attack these things. Which and- is why Ramon is so much more than just a personal trainer. It is getting into that mindset of each client and figuring out what you just said, the, the barrier as why they haven't made progress in the past. And then you tend to sort of give them that reinforcement while you're training their body, yeah. which is why you're unique and you have a very active following among you know CEOs and very powerful people in the Boston business community. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even yourself, right? What time do you wake up and have your coffee? <laughs> Five. 5 a.m., right? Well, that was pre-COVID. COVID has changed my <laughs> alarm clock a little bit. <laughs> but re- re- regardless, you, wo- you woke up early for a long time. Yeah, and I did. You, wo- you woke up early getting after it, getting yeah. after it. And and pe- people will see that and be like, oh, she's crazy, you know? But you're already, by, by 8 o'clock, you're already on fifth gear. You're already, not only did you answer emails, you... You got things set up. You fix things. You man, you have two two kids, right? Yeah. Two kids, man. They're already in school. Like already by like nine o'clock, when everybody's waking up eating breakfast, you've already accomplished like five days worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people say that. People say that the power morning really makes a huge difference in outcomes, and I know you subscribe to that yourself because you're yeah. an early morning riser yeah. you grind out your workouts in the early morning or meet with clients mm-hmm. and each day you do try to set up a bit of a routine so that's a great question as we begin to give people something to think about as they're focusing on their comeback for the fall mm-hmm. if somebody is struggling with their body or their fitness level what do you think is a good place for them to start? What is a question they could ask themselves or a routine they could get into? Uh, well, the, 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 question, the question is why. Why? Mm-hmm. Do, the, the comeback is why, why a comeback, okay? Yep. And, and once you say, okay, I want to come back, come back to what? Are Ooh. we saying come come back to what just work like you you you're saying you want to work out but what does that mean are you working what are you working out for right so, so and and obviously it's to be healthy and 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 stay moving but there there's things that they should put behind that like maybe you know I want to be more active with my kids I want to hike more you know like I you know I, I, during this time I was able to just go out in nature like I, I i know a lot of friends they go do the blue hills now that they never did and they they love it you know so so now they want to incorporate that in their life people um people bike more bike mm-hmm. sales were going off the roof so 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 there there are wise to things and if they can find out why like even why do you even want to be skinnier is going to get you there faster than just seeing this person on TV and say, oh, I need to be like that. It's, 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 it's more than that. And, and, and it comes from within. So like, why do you want it? And then let's create, create, I'm saying let's, cause I'm so used to saying it, <laughs> create, create a plan, create a plan to get there. And, and whether it's one thing or another, it's, it, it's like you, you ever hear about like all the little things stack up and then you have a big result. Yeah, it's like, it's like change, change one thing like you, like you, you're waking up at five, more, five in the morning doing your emails, but now you got them out of the way. So now you actually like when people say, oh, can you email me? Yeah, I can. Oh, no, I got 200 to get to. No, nah, not in my world. I already crushed those in the morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if it's getting the emails out the way that you're saying you can't work out now, the emails are out. What's next? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't wake up early enough. Well. Yeah, I do because I wake up at five and do my emails. So I am up, right? Oh, wait, no, my kids. Why? Well, I did all by nine. So now you have all day to get done what you really want to get done. So now your why can be tackled. And I of- think you hit one of the reasons really clearly that throws people off the most. It takes you almost 80% of the effort to get to the end destination before you really see the massive results, right? Correct. So if you're training someone 
they would love to see a ripped six pack at their third workout, but that is never going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to keep yourself motivated to get to month four or five, or maybe with you month three, Mm -hmm. um, and keep that consistency, even though the results aren't there yet. Yeah. And, and, and what I like to tell people is you need to be realistic. Okay. You didn't go to, you didn't go to, you didn't go to college and graduate after freshman year. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So, 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 so they need to, they need to be realistic. Like if you're coming to me and saying, I, I, I always ask, you know, when was the last time you felt confident, like confident, like you could walk down the street and man, you don't care who came in front of you. It was like, excuse me, sir, move out my way. And shame on you for not saying excuse me. You know what I mean? Like, yep. when, when was the last time you felt like that? And, you know, I get different. You know, some people say three years, five years, 10 years. Man, I haven't done that since high school. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shoot. Okay. So you're telling me that you haven't been your best since, let's, let's, let's say, two years. So if you're telling me two years ago, you can't get on yourself for a month of not seeing something. I mean, we're talking two years of damage here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very so, true. So, so, so we, so there's a there's a mindset that has to be dealt with, so that at the end of the day, you can appreciate every level of success. And that's that's what I feel like. Once people can harness that, then they actually grow and they can stay happy the whole process of the way, and they look forward to the next step. Because they're like, oh, my God, I had so much growth. Oh, my God, I can't believe I did that. Like, I, I, there was one guy I was able to train. And, you know, he was telling me, he's like, uh, it, he, he was seeing it from the other end because he never actually had success. So he's mm-hmm. actually enjoying every process because he never had the success. And it was funny because a comment came in, like, you know, the, the comments just have to come in. And it was like, we're like, we're like in month two and he was enjoying the whole process of the way. And then he was like, he came in with, Oh my God, I looked in the mirror, man. I got to work on this. I'm like, yes, you do. But remember you never had what you have right now. (laughs) Yeah. That, that is beautiful. So if Ramon Garcia is coaching you on your comeback, he's going to tell you, you need to know why you're doing it. You need yeah. to know where you're getting towards. Yes. You need to have patience and be kind to yourself during the journey mm-hmm. and understand that if you are untangling a long history of not being in shape or not being on the career or financial success that you want, it's going to take some time, yo. It's going to take a little breath. You have to mm-hmm. hang in there for the 80% to see the 20%. That's wonderful. Right, right, and 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 wherever you, you wherever you dabble your energy, in, in a sense of, if you give more energy towards the negative, and and when I say negative, I mean things that kind of bring stress upon your life. Those things are going to pop up more. So that eighty twenty that you're saying, yep. it literally jumps into everything. Eighty twenty of work, eighty twenty yep. of fitness, eighty twenty of eating, eighty twenty. It just doesn't stop. It's everywhere. So when people, when, 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 if people can understand that literally just learn the 80, 20 and implement it into all your endeavors, you're going to be successful. Amazing. Well, if you need a personal trader in Boston, you know, Ramon Garcia is your man. If you are interested in becoming a personal trainer AAPT.com, American Academy of Personal Training, is the place to go uh, to get your certification and that hands-on practice. They have days and nights and weekend classes, so go there to sign up. And Ramon, we really thank you for your time. I think you've had a pretty incredible run at reinventing yourselves multiple times, and I think everyone can learn from your tips on how to be the best version of yourself. So thank you. Oh, um, it, th- thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. And I love talking. You're like one of the best talkers ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good talker. My teachers <laughs> told me that when I was in second and third grade and I got in trouble a lot because I was oh, a very God. good talker. <laughs> Listen, the, 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 I mean, you don't know me from a hole in the wall. 
right? I mean, the first time we met. And man, like the belief you threw in the, like, cause you know, I, I, you came in when we, we just bought the school. That's when you came in to help us like, just get things going, man. And just hearing the conviction that you were able to like throw into our, into like our souls of like, you guys are gonna do it and we're gonna crush it. Like there's only one way to go is up. And then just going through months of like, you know, it's like that struggle, that grind, you know? And it's like, where is that one voice, man? Is it- Yeah, well, we all have a superpower, right? Your superpower is seeing the potential in people's bodies. And my superpower is seeing the potential in people's businesses. (laughs) So we sort of do the same thing, but with a different outcome. Yeah. Yeah, no, but kudos to you, man, and and you know, keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're just gonna keep inspiring people, and and make them cry like they should. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, this is an amazing episode, and thank you. And make sure to go follow um, Ramon at Elevate Fitness on Instagram if you want to get uh, doses of his fitness tips. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care, Ramon. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Momentum Magnet. We're here every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern time to share inspiring comeback stories. We want to hear your reviews and love getting your subscriptions on iTunes and Spotify. For show notes and past episodes, visit MomentumMagnet.com. I'm Karen Morales, keynote speaker, writer, and founder and CEO of Marketing Magnet, a fast-growing marketing agency for purpose-driven companies. Whether you are a business needing an agency or if you are looking for weekly tips to get ahead, sign up at marketing-magnet.com to receive our weekly inspiration on getting more in your life and business. Okay, all clear.